everyone, thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel and welcome to Anatomy 101. In this video, we're going to start our discussion on the thoracic cage, which is also called the rib cage. We are going to go over the sections of the ribs and we're going to go over the unique characteristics of the ribs. We will learn about the cartilage in the ribs and more. So we have a lot to go over. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, please do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up. Also, please post a comment, subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. All right, without any further ado, let's get right into the video. The axial skeleton, the thoracic cage. The human thoracic cage consists of the thoracic vertebrae, the ribs, the coastal cartilages, and the sternum. They function to protect the contents of the upper abdomen and assist in respiration. A human thoracic cage has 12 ribs on each side that terminate, which means that they form an ending on their anterior or front side into a special cartilage called Called the coastal cartilage. The upper seven pairs of the ribs are called the tree ribs because they join medially, which means in the middle, and they attach directly to the sternum. The remaining five pairs of ribs are called the false ribs because their costal cartilages do not in any way make contact with the sternum directly. Three of the five false ribs link their costal cartilages with that of the seventh rib, do not attach at all, and the last two do not attach totally to the sternum. Of the 12 pair of ribs, the last two pairs have no costal cartilages and appear to be hanging, hence they are called the floating ribs. A normal rib has a shaft which is long and slender, having an anterior or frontal and posterior, meaning backside, end. It normally goes around the chest and slightly slopes downwards and has an external and an internal surface. The superior, which means upper, margin of a rib shaft is very smooth and has a round edge, while the inferior or lower portion has a much sharper margin and the internal surfaces inferior margin has a costal growth. The distal end or the part situated away from the point of attachment of the posterior region is enlarged forming the head, which provides the articulation site with the faucet on an independent vertebrae. And also simultaneously, the head attaches to the body of the superior vertebrae, higher than the vertebrae whose faucets articulated. A faucet is a smooth, flat, circumscribed, or circular surface. The ribs neck is flat and is laterally positioned, meaning on the side, to the head on which the ligaments attached to. The head of the rib articulates to the vertebrae's transverse process with the tubercle. When we say articulation, the medical meaning of this is when two bones are attached for the purpose of motion. A rib's tubercle has a non-articulation region that has a rough texture due to ligaments attached to it and an articular region containing a faucet which is oval in shape and it corresponds with the faucet found on its individual vertebrae. Costal cartilages of ribs are made up of special translucent cartilage called the hyaline cartilage that has expanding and compression capabilities to aid in respiration. The first rib is flat horizontally and has inferior or lower and superior surfaces or upper that is broad. It articulates with the first thoracic vertebrae and has the scaling tubercle on its superior or upper surface that is distinct. The second rib is two times longer than the first rib and it articulates with the thoracic vertebrae. Same to all other ribs. The tenth rib only only has a single faucet to articulate with the individual thoracic vertebrae. A facet is a small flat surface on a bone. Ribs 11 and 12 are distinct. They are the last ribs and they articulate only with the vertebrae's body and they lack a neck or tubercle. They are slightly curved and they are much shorter than the other ribs and they point interiorly, which means towards the front. This gives them the characteristic name floating ribs since they do not attach to the costal cartilages, like a normal rib. 
All right, guys, I really hope you liked that video going over the thoracic cage. Make sure you stay tuned because in the next video, we are going to continue our discussion on the thoracic cage. In that video, we're going to learn about the sternum or breastbone. We will also learn about the different organs that the thoracic cage houses and more. So that video will be posted shortly, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Also, if you are studying anatomy and physiology, I'm sure by now you've realized just how much information it is. If you're looking for a proven study strategy that's worked, it worked for me and it's worked for thousands of other students, make sure you become a member of my channel because I've uploaded my best-selling program, How to Study for Anatomy and Physiology, and you can have access to it for just $5 a month. And of course, you can cancel anytime. All right, guys, I really hope all of this helps you out a lot, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Talk to you then. Bye.